so first these three will fill then then it will start filling up like this and then the ninth electron will go in here because again it has no empty orbital left so it has no option but to pair up now when we look at neon which has 10 electrons and it's a noble gas now when you look at neon 1 and 2 1 and 2 then first these three will fill with one electron and then this will fill like this the tenth electron goes into the third one it pairs up with the third one so you can see that this is how we fill orbitals now if you notice these orbitals tell a lot about the bonding in all these molecules because if you see if you look at the elect if you look at neon all the orbitals of neon are full 1s 2s and 2p all of them are full and because all of them are full you can see that there can uh, that it cannot take any more electrons and it does not want to give any electrons because all its orbitals are full uh, because you know that an, an atomic orbital can it can uh, can only hold two electrons in total a maximum of two electrons and you can see that all orbitals in in neon have two electrons so that's why it's called a noble gas that's why it is so unreactive because no filling can take place then you know that fluorine forms single bonds fluorine forms single bonds because you can see that it has one empty orbital uh, not one empty orbital one half empty orbital because it can only accept one electron to fill this empty orbital and uh, in this half empty orbital and that's why fluorine forms single bonds then when you look at oxygen oxygen has two half empty orbitals and that's why o2 has a double bond oxygen gas has a double bond because it can because it can take one electron each in both orbitals then nitrogen forms triple bonds like this because you can see that there are three half empty orbitals and because there are three half empty orbitals obviously um, they, they can take one each and therefore it will form triple bonds so this is how uh, this is what orbitals tell us about the electron uh, about the about the chemical bonding and about everything else now how do we write electronic configurations so let's take the example of nitrogen let's take the example of nitrogen now we have 1s then we have 2s then we have 2p so this is nitrogen we fill 2 over here here that's it seven electrons in nitrogen so if you remember for nitrogen you always wrote the electronic config configuration 2 comma 5 because because two electrons in the first shell and five electrons in the second shell in total because 2s and 2p 2p both belong to the second shell even though 2p has more energy than 2s so the fact of the matter is that both 2s and 2p belong to the second shell so in total the second shell has 5 electrons because 1 plus 1 2 2 plus 3 5 so 2 comma 5 was what you initially wrote and as the electronic configuration of nitrogen however this is a wrong way of writing the electronic configuration from now onwards we have to write the electronic configuration like this 1s2 2s2 2p3 now this is because this what this tells us that first shell the s subshell two electrons because you can see that one represents the first shell the sub, the principal quantum shell which is the main shell so first shell the s represents the s subshell obviously and the two superscript represents the number of electrons in the subshell then 2s2 because again in the second shell in the s subshell there are two electrons so there are two electrons so um, you, you have to write 2s2 then in the second shell in the p subshell there are a total of three electrons so 2p3 that's how we write electronic configurations now let's do some more examples of electronic configurations when we look at sodium sodium has 11 electrons in total 11 electrons so let's see 